I don't think it's a chitin, unless chitins come with all, all multiple plates, but I don't know. It's like a clam almost. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. We want to sample it? Uh, no. I'm waiting on people in the chat, but if you guys have to move, that's fine. I got images of it. Roger that. Looks like we've been seeing them, so if they do want to... Line. Sample them like we can uh, get ahead and get one. Three one five. Looks like the in the chat we s don't know what that was. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, like Rennie said, if um <clears throat> if it turns out that you guys want to sample that, we have been seeing a few of them. So okay, we can boogie out and then. The ship moves wrapping up. I'll do another hundred. Sounds good. Might want to pause after that one because we're coming up on a depth where we might want to collect another rock sample. I think those are the anemones too that I want to get a closer look at, just just so you get a feel for what they look like. Oh, Roger. Yeah, I'll boogie up the wall a little, and then uh, we'll take a look at some of those okay. anemones. Uh, and yeah, Adam, I I copied you on that, so we'll see about pausing after the next one. That'll probably put us at three six three zero depth, somewhere around there. Good there, Jake. That's great. see there's these evidence of these big bases and stalks of like probably sponges mm -hmm. yeah so something up above because we haven't really been seeing anything that's on the rocks you know evidence that they've been there it looks like maybe they're from above Yeah, sure thing. Yep. Whoa. That's pretty neat. We had to it's boogie. All one. Go ahead and do a snap okay. zoom there, please. Sorry, guys. Void. Fortunately, gotta go. Oh, there's another one of those stock critters. The white thing? The same thing we just looked at. Oh, okay. Just passed by another one. Whoa. First. Uh -huh. Oh. 
Is that a dead sponge? Yeah, very dead sponge. More oh, there's some more of those anemones. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm not in the best of positions to take a good zoom on that. Looks like there's a shark behind us. You can see it in the starboard bio box cams. Oh, yeah. Black coral. Gonna come up there, little Jake. Yep. It's fifteen five on the tension. Does it go up a bit when you haul in? Uh, I think it's more from those those uh, swells that we were just experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every few minutes we get some bigger swells, so you see the tension peaks. Mm -hmm. Come back up higher. But, uh, overall, it's been going down a little bit as we've come up. Mm -hmm. Neat little valley here. like one of those anemones off to the right there. I think that might be the, the chitin thing. Archaeopod. That we zoomed in yeah. on. Did you still want to look at this one? Or still that same brachiopod, not the anemone there. Oh uh, yeah, if you can zoom if you have time. Yep. Was that a black coral we passed over right when we yeah. We saw one black coral, yeah. Nice. Go ahead and do a snap zoom in there, please, Dave. There's talk in the science chat of possible collection. Okay. It's one of these. Roger that. We'll keep that in mind. So the size of it, was it up? Could that be slurped? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's pretty small. Is it? All right, full wide, please. We could get ahead, or maybe we'll get lucky, and at the end of this move, when we're going to stop anyway, there'll be some there. Okay. Something is definitely taking care of the sediment in this area. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like the squiggles. Yeah. So yeah, I think we are interested in collecting one of those if we get a chance to. Roger that. Sure. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so I was kind of wondering why some of the manganese crust is so black versus the other dusted with sediment. But Rennie, you're probably right. There's something uh, kind of scouring the sediment off of it. I guess it's that big purple one we saw. <laughs> <laughs> we were seeing this um, a lot in the last cruise. And at the end of the trails, we would find chitin, some cucumbers, mm. and some other mm. fauna that I can't remember. So I think they are moving mm. along there and eating sediment. Sea star. What yeah, I've been seeing line? that. It's the um, camera dome. It like, there's some reflection going on of when the 
tether comes up on the right side. Uh, oh, yeah. It shows in the top left. I see. Okay. It's just because of the like, refraction. Yeah, it takes on. on it. One of our viewers is asking if perhaps those white things we're seeing could be mobile, since it looks like there's some exposed crust near them. If they could be what? Mobile. Yeah, I think they are. They, I, it seems like one of them was at the end of one of those little patches. Mm. So. Oh yeah, I think you're right, Jake. Yep. Totally correlates. Hmm. So whenever it comes up in that bottom right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Huh. Some weird reflection yeah. fraction going on in the dome. Sure is. First time I've worked with the mini zoos, so. Hey, Randy, where are we in that ship move? Uh, the ship has f about 50 more meters to go in the move, and Argus is probably still has about 80 meters. Can I come up there, Jake? Oh, 80 to 100 meters. <laughs> but we can stop here if you like. No, no, I'm fine. I just want to know sure. how much more we're where we stopped. It's all really glassy bit just there. It's like occasionally you see these spots that are super glassy. I'm going to um, give you a reset. Roger. Oh, I don't know. oh gorgeous. So beautiful. It's always lovely to see. Stopped crinoid? Oh, yeah. yeah. Jake's getting in on the bingo card, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy ones. <laughs> oh. All right, come on up there. <laughs> what type of Gorgia was that one that we were not quite, quite sure of? And then somebody wrote in. It's that white one. What did you say, Rennie? Something like Militaris or something? Militaris? What was the ru Ruba Gorgia? What was the first oh, part? Um, Back to the chat. So. Ramula Gorgia. Ramu R A M U L I, and that's Gorgia. Ramula Gorgia. Ramula Gorgia. It's a new one to me. Yeah. Ramula Gorgia.
Just for reference, we're about two hours. When we got on the bottom, we had a little bit of bottom configuring to do, so maybe between one and a half and two hours, we've gone 425 meters. You mean XY? XY. Yep. And about 300 meters, or approaching 300 meters vertically. What's the what's the total distance you want to cover for this dive again? Eight point one kilometers. Raj. So that would be sixteen. Two. Thirty two hours. 32 hours if we did it this speed? Well, I'm just, that's oh. just a base on two hours, not, I think we lost a half an hour to the, um. There's one spot where we may just have to go through the water column so we don't have to go downhill, uh, somewhat near the top and, so. Mm -mm. Is this one of those anemones you guys wanted to look at? Oh, yeah. Sorry. 28 hours on bottom if we keep our current. 28, okay. Speed and sampling rate. All right, go ahead, Dave. Sorry. Sorry, I'm waving around a bit too much. It'll come a little wide. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. I uh, go ahead and go full on in there for a sec. We'll be stable now. Nice. You look so velvety down here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wait, please. the longest dive that Hercules has done so far? Uh, 75 hours. Wow. Somewhere around there. Where was that? That was for Ocean Networks Canada, which I think we were saying you probably has the record for shortest dive as well. <laughs> they, it's very task oriented, so we had enough to do down at the bottom, um, I if I had to guess, that would it would likely it would have been at the main endeavor vent field. Mm -hmm. Have a lot of uh, sensors. Sometimes we get on with an elevator and just kind of deploying things, retrieving things, moving things around, uh, plugging and unplugging. And if there's enough things on the task list to keep us busy and the ROVs are still happy, then we stay down and do it. Is that a cucumber? Yeah. Yeah. And then the short dives, similarly, in some other shallower inshore um, Venus Observatory, maybe a couple hundred meters or a hundred meters or so, or even shallower, go down, flip a switch, or go down and plug something in, come back. <laughs> Actually, let's get a different view of this guy.
a little different mm -hmm. than the uh, Go ahead and push on in there, Dave. exploration that we have, which is a more open-ended. It uh, has a, ooh, that looks different. It does look different. It's just a weird angle of it, I guess, huh? Yeah. Let's go. Is it too big for the slurp? Mm. We're kind of, chubby. kind of. Are you too far behind? Yeah, we're yeah, a bit we're far, behind. far behind okay. there. No problem. But we can keep an eye out for another pink one. Okay. Looks friendly. <laughs> 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 Not running like the purple one. <laughs> yeah. um, right, the ship has come right. to a stop. And Argus has probably 50 right there, meters to go. Okay, thank you. Certainly less steep here. Just a reminder to our viewers, feel free to type your questions into the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. The crab Some, lobster. Oh yeah, squat lobster. I'm a little, I'm a bit behind, so I won't be able to stop too much, but you want to do a partial zoom there, please? So we fly past it. Or nice. Oh, sorry, guys. So you got caught in someone's sticky little... What is the scientific name for those... For what? Lobster. For the squat lobsters? Oh, oh. I don't know. Uh, the crab is a galatheid that looks like that, but that's not that one. Squat lobster. Can't recall. Another an enemy there. A bit of funny business here, so yeah. you might see some lateral. What's the next target depth for the rock? Uh, earlier I said 3,600, but I'm revising that to 3,400. Okay. Oh, Raj. Another bathypathies by coral, or looks like a bathypathies. Could be something else. I would say you're right with bathypathy, yeah. So Adam, we're not going to, at the end of the ship move, we're not going to take a rock sample then? No, I want to move a bit further okay. upslope, but but I think we ought to pause there and, and uh, you know, have a more of a look around. Sure thing.
see what you're saying, yeah. I think Argus should be settling here in this region. Hmm? Yeah. So uh, if we don't need to keep moving, then we can kind of lateral uh, along this slope a little bit. Yeah, sure thing. Also do a little wag this way if you want to see. I'll come back around this way. Anything in particular you're looking for there, Adam? Yeah, I was looking for one of those uh, white uh, round guys. Oh, the little brachiopod looking? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Keep our eyes out. How about that one there? Yeah, it looks like one in the... Limpet. <laughs> yeah. I know what it is. Curious. This one, you can really see the, the squiggly patterns in the rock of where the sediment has been eaten away. Yeah. Right, go ahead and push on in there, Dave. Possibly with the culprit in frame. <laughs> yeah. That's the same fellow, right? Yep. Yep. Jake, it's all you. Let's do it. Nice shot. Are we slurping? Yeah, we're gonna slurp this guy. Correct science, it's all right if we slurp this? Yes. Yes, best way to get an intact sample. All right, uh, stand by there one, Jake. Pull away, please. And a rack bag full. Go ahead, Bridge. Dave, you want to open the iris a little bit, please? Roger. Roger that. Nice, Jake. Yep. Good grab. Try rotating it so you get a different... Nice. Stand by there. Yep. You want to flush? You want flush? Yep. Okay. Um. So what? Uh, what? 
orientation with the ship prefer. Sample jar too. Go ahead, Jake. All right. Go ahead and push on in there a bit there, Dave, please. All right. That's great. All right, Jake. You this might has be been called here. the scrubbing yeah, bubble the in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> the scrubbing <laughs> bubble. I we'll love it. That. Scrubbing bubble. Someone yeah. else. Yeah, they look like there. eyeballs. <laughs> Eyeball. Sorry. Is your seafloor covered with sediment? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, looking a bit bubbles. big for it, actually. Yeah, that might not fit. Let's see. Do you want to rotate your jaws a little? I think it'll. I think it'll go. Okay. Gotta peel it off. There, you got it there. I think it's the exact diameter of yeah. the thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <Okay>. oh <laughs> look at that! <laughs> nice <laughs> pick. Can we drop it in the pile box? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's keep this section on it, though. Full wide there. It'll have to go in a forward one, so just keep that in mind yeah. as far as yeah, with the suction. what other samples are Suction's going in there. Still sure. uh, How many collection boxes are on Perkins? Uh, right now we have it configured for two larger okay, bio boxes in there, front please. that you're about to see. Um, and then we have... Uh, Sorry. Hold on, I'm... I have to take notes on the sample collection real quick. There's uh, six Thank additional you. bio boxes, or as some people call them, rock boxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on the, the starboard the side of the vehicle. The hydraulic. And we'll have to pick up and go. Looks like you're over the bin. We can combine samples, Ready? more than one in a box. Right. Um, we just have to be careful what we put together. You don't want to put like a big rock on top of this guy. Go ahead and yeah. give it a little shake. There, nice. There <laughs> Nicely goes. done, Jake. Awesome. Really interesting. Right. Sure it does cool. look like a limpet. They called it, it look a, like a um, what do they call it? It does look like a limpet. In the chat, a Clydoriza? Nicely done. Um. Osaka says, gastropod first filmed in 2017, American Samoa. Hmm. I like that. We'll go with gastropod. <laughs> ah, scrubbing bubble. Covers all the bases. Nice. Good. I'm going to get going. Yep. Yeah, you're going to start to get pulled off to the... Northeast. Roger that. Go ahead. But it should be able to come up slope and we'll just gently go with it. Ooh. Oh, nice. Nice. Wow. Oh, that's fun. Rennie, as you pointed out, there's got to be a whole bunch more of these up the slope because there's a nice bunch there. of stocks. You want to do a the partial slope. there while we push on by? Yeah, it's That's looking good. like this similar diameter to this one that we're looking but at, too. Dead. Very cool. Nice. Getting into Sponge Land. Full wide, please. Sponge Land. They sell tickets for at Disneyland for Sponge Land. <laughs> Tickets to Sponge Land. <laughs> hmm. There's two sides to that park soft side and the abrasive side. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Any bingo guesses for the sponge? Hmm. Talk to me in a few days. I need to get <laughs> blown up on my sponges, you know? Yeah. 
Fine show thinks it's the Colossacus oxy discus. Oh, oh, I was I was just about Is to that say that. Is that what you that. were about to say? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I ruined it. Colossacus. I've heard Steve say that word. And Chris Kelly. You know, one thing that's cool about exploring something like this is the closer you get, the more you see, right? We we go over it with a ship and the sonar, and it looks like this is a, just a perfectly smooth slope. And then we get down here, and we see it's, you know, got tons of structure. And then we get a little closer, and we start to see some of the big organisms, and a little closer, some of the small organisms. It's, uh, you know? You can never finish exploring something like this. You get closer and closer and look deeper and deeper. Yeah, right when we think we've covered a lot, it's just zoom out and then you see mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a single path over this giant sea mount. Those uh, images in 3D where you can see our dive tracks running, I don't know. I think you can drop them in Google Earth, um, but those really give you some perspective of yeah, we'll how see. little we actually cover. See if they've uh, yeah, and probably the the line is probably wider than what we actually see. Yeah, you know? the field of view here is you know what, a few meters uh, across. Yeah, and the seamount is uh, like fifteen thousand meters across. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Adam. Do you want us to keep wagging kind of laterally left and right? The ship was having a little bit of, uh, got pushed off position a little bit. Yeah, um, I was wondering if, if they wanted to uh, adjust themselves or if they're better underway. Um, I think we're okay underway. It's It'll be actually going backwards. So I think Okay, yeah. So I'm happy to, to keep moving to waypoint too. Sure thing. Let me just reassess our path. Looks like we wanna we're gonna start to get up on the, the ridge like feature. Straight there is three two five, but I think we wanna intersect it sooner. So maybe three three one zero. Or do you wanna head over to it? I don't know no, if you no. have back up. Oh uh, what you had there, three well, three one zero. zero is good. Cool. Okay. Roger that. Bridge nav. Can we step 100 meters bearing 310? Thank you.
please, can one of you talk about your background and what brought you to this field? Jake. Sure. I'll start. Um, I uh, went to school at the University of Rhode Island for ocean engineering, and I actually applied to the internship, uh, similarly to Jess and Rennie in the front row. We also started; they also started as interns, um, and I did that my senior year um, of my uh, of college, and. Uh, after that, I've continued to sail with the Nautilus as a contractor. Um, but I started in their ROV internship program. Then Jake just finished a master's degree also in ocean engineering? Yep, right? same program at Congrats. University of Rhode Island. Thank you. Adam, can you talk about how many dive targets we have for this expedition? You mean separate dives? Sure. Yeah, so there's seven seamounts in this chain, and you know one of our kind of larger objectives would be to characterize the entire chain. It doesn't mean that we necessarily have to visit every seamount. Uh, in fact, one of the seamounts is within the boundaries of the National Monument, and, and we're not going to be visiting that one, but uh, we're going to try and visit uh, three to four of, of the, the seamounts and, and explore them from top to bottom. Uh, and on each one, there's a series of targets that, that we'll uh, identify. Sometimes it'll be ridges like the one that we're headed to now. Sometimes it'll be the summit. Sometimes it'll be features on the flank. Uh, and so there's a huge variety of targets, but on a larger macro scale, I'd say three to four of the seamounts across the entire mm -hmm. chain. Dave, you want to do a partial on this guy? That's great. Thank you. I think it's a fish. Mm. Yeah. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I, I know, I still can't tell the difference between a fish and an eel. <laughs> Strangest coral I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when Ed McNichol was here, he would always say, uh, that's chordate. Chordate. <laughs> and I didn't. And I, I wasn't in on the joke for a while, so I was like, oh, I think that's a chordate. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have a biology background for that question about the pilot's backgrounds and et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Not a lot of biology background up front. <laughs> nope. But I bet you learn a lot on every expedition. It's absolutely true. The front row has identified every you know, <laughs> organism we've seen. So I'm impressed. Randy does pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have the photon advantage. We're closer to it. <laughs> see it first. Photon <laughs> advantage. <laughs> cool phrase.
So, Renny, when, when we start a ship move from a mm -hmm. full stop like that, mm -hmm. uh, how long does it take before you start to see Argus? Um, move? My general guess has been, so for this depth, around 35 to 4,000 meters, it looks like it was taking about five, four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, over over the years, had guessed somewhere around one minute per thousand meters. Mm -hmm. Are you able to zoom on that thing right there on the rock? Uh, wh which one? Uh, the white thing on the bottom right. The, the coral? Yeah. On the underside. Sure. Let me get us into a good spot there. There it is. Nice. Let me telestrate that for you. Yeah, telestrator is awesome, so feel free to use the telestrator. All right, go ahead on in there, Dave. What do we got here? Is that that's a black coral? <laughs> but what? Wow, that's Ooh. a cool feature. Yeah. The scientist on the last cruise accidentally called it a telecaster a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the telecaster real quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what kind of black coral if it's... Seems like the stalk has polyps on it, and I don't know if that's something that Bathy Pathies has. Yeah, it seems like the Bathy Pathies has like, branches all the way down, mostly, too. Right, and this is like it's a few. Mm, interesting. It's a great shot. Hmm. All right, full wide there, please. Looks like we're feeling a bit of that swing from the earlier move. So our 310 will eventually come around, I think. Unless you're feeling any current, that could be influencing us, but I don't really see too much, do you? There's only a little bit of current. Yeah, yeah it's not too crazy. They carry a lot of cable. Telestrator is a fairly new addition to the studio, correct? Yep. I believe it was last year, yeah. This is a new control room that we're in. So uh, new to this system, uh, we've been uh, trying to convince uh, oceanography that a telestrator would be uh, a, a good addition rather than pointing with a stick. <laughs> Which was the uh, previous mode? Rennie has said stick. I stick still have it as a backup. The stick was <laughs> preserved. The stick was preserved for historical purposes. Yeah, there was a bit of delay as they adopted the the telecaster. But yeah, then they found that's right. Was a, ver a very little use. In the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, telestrator has been used in broadcast, uh, especially in sports, for for years. Uh, and that's our background. Uh, I'm one of the ones, one of the three guys that designed and built this, uh, this video system. So uh, we've been trying to get uh, the idea of a Telecaster custom. It was kind of perceived as a bit of a toy, uh, mm. but uh, seems to serve a pretty useful purpose these days. Yeah. It seems like it. The scientists that have been um, on board here have been passing it around to other organizations. It sounds like that they want, they want it. Our viewers I seem to enjoy it as well. I knew I should have tried to get some royalties.
Oh, there's another anemone. Did you guys want another zoom on those, or are you good? I think I'm okay on that. Thank you. Roger. Bridge nav. Uh, one more step. Uh, 100 meters, 310. Thank you. Yeah. It's in the camera, yeah. Lisa, how did you uh, find out about OET and, and this opportunity? Well, I had a very fortuitous connection. Turns out that our expedition leader, Allison Fundus, her cousin is uh, the communications director for my school district in Kansas. Oh. And uh, Dr. Ballard is originally from Wichita, Kansas, as you may know. And at some point in 2018, he was coming through Kansas, and I got an email late one night from our communications director, and she said, she sent it to all of the science teachers and said, would anybody be interested in having him come? And maybe I was the only person who was awake at the time, but I jumped on that because I was about to cover the water unit with my students. We cover green water, fresh water, and again, that's really hard for my students because they have no connection. They feel like they have no connection to the ocean. They just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. We live about 225 miles from the center of the continental United States. So again, many of them have never even seen the ocean. So Dr. Ballard came and did a presentation for our school, and it was just amazing. There were, I had students who were almost in tears at the end of his talk. It was, oh. I feel like it was life changing for some of my students. And um, I found out about the teacher opportunity through his visit. Had to wait a while because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was originally scheduled to travel in 2020. The SCFs did not get to travel that year. So I feel very fortunate to be here. It's part of the core of exploration. Glad you made it out. Yeah. Yep.
Lisa, you said that this is also your first time on a ship? It is. It's. I've only been on a ship once before for three days, so it's very novel for me. I've learned so much. <laughs> Enjoyed every minute. Uh, what has been the most unexpected thing about the expedition so far? Um, I guess I would have to admit that the how much you can feel the swells that we've been feeling. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been feeling pretty good, but I was just a little bit shocked. I didn't sleep a whole lot last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just, it rolls you just like a little bit beyond the... <laughs> Threshold, the <laughs> threshold of where you can sleep through it. It's also hard to sleep because I've been so excited. Hmm. Well, now we're on the first dive. Steep and revelly. This is interesting. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot more of this volcanic wretch of broken up pieces mm. of lava. Mm. Even though it looks like it would be easy to pick up any one of these pieces, I bet they're all kind of welded together by that uh, manganese crust. Yeah. Yeah. You're aiming for 3,400 around on thereabouts for another rock? Another rock and another sea cucumber, correct? If we get another one of those pink ones? Mm. Yeah, really any color um, that we see below 3,000 meters is of interest. 